Hi everyone, thanks for being with us. Tonight we demonstrate a technique for editing landscape style images. Please don't forget to leave us feedback. We love um, constructive criticism and to be honest, we're pretty much okay with the non-constructive variety too. We're, we'll, <laughs> we'll take all input we can get um, to make our videos better and give you guys more of the type of things that you want to see. So. Before we get started tonight, let's say a big thank you to Dennis Riddlemoser, who is so kind as to send us some of his photos uh, so that we could work on them tonight and use them to demonstrate a couple of techniques on some photos that are fresh as they are not ours. The pictures. The pictures not are the not ours. <laughs> techniques are our, are, are ours. Yes, yes, the photos are not. Yes. So, yeah, thanks again, Dennis, for providing. And he provided the uh, raw files uh, just to uh, show different technique, well, how much you can pull out of uh, raw files. Um, so I guess we're going to start with the first one. And so this is out of the camera, which, of course, raw file is going to be looking fairly flat, not saturated and all that kind of stuff. But that's normal. That's expected. And that's pretty much that. That's that's how it is. Uh, as, a, as opposed to JPEGs. Mm -hmm. This guy looks pretty good though, I gotta say. It's a yeah. strong photo, right I, out of the camera. I, yeah, I have to say that he got pretty much almost perfect exposure and all that kind of stuff. So that that it's not gonna be very dramatic. We're not trying to save a picture. Right, right, right. Uh, which in RAW you can definitely do. So those are just gonna be little tweaks and hopefully we can pick up, you know, a trick here and there. Yeah, So pretty clean canvas to work with. It's a nice place to start. Right, 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 right. So anyway, so we'll, we'll start basically with the first one. Now, what I found uh, for landscape pictures, the following technique seems to work pretty well. Um, I think, in my opinion, the first thing to start with is to start with a good exposure value. Where should your histogram be? And sometimes it's hard because, you know, you can start with, let's say, you push it, and you're like, oh, this is too much. So then you drop, and then you drop, you know, you, you kind of like counterbalance something here. So you may push the exposure and then realize that, oh, it is too much white. And this is not right because, you you know, you counterbalance. Yeah. So I find it better to have this exposure as accurate as possible. And it will make the whole workflow much easier. So let's start at zero. What I think works pretty well is to basically reduce the histogram to know where really where the values are. So because the histogram is going to be impacted by the temperature, as you can see if I move this, the histogram is going to change. That's why I like to start with a fairly close temperature for the picture. It will make sense. So here we know that it's, okay, I shot, we know it's in the afternoon. So might as well choose daylight and it gives us a uh, histogram. Um, then another variable that will change the how the histogram is rendered and actually how the picture is is the profile um, by default when you import picture in Lightroom it will go to Adobe standard uh, it's a matter of how um, all the profiles that you would have here is is the picture style in the camera so when you shoot in JPEG or even back at the back of screen you can select monochrome you can select a lot of different style of portrait and all that and it will change how the picture is going to be rendered. So here, I like to start with um, a profile that would be somewhat representative as a good starting point. Doesn't mean that the picture is going to have to be like that at the end. So for example, I'm going to go to Faithful. Do I like this? Okay, that's a little flat to me. Okay, the landscape, of course it is a landscape, but the yeah. landscape uh, seems to work pretty well here. Now you don't have to use landscape if it is a landscape. Sometimes using portrait on the right, landscape sure. picture may work and vice versa. Um, neutral is a little flat to me. Portrait, that's pretty okay. That's pretty balanced. Yeah. Less saturated than the landscape. Right, one. it plays with saturation and color shifts. And so some of the yellows may be bumped a little bit and like I think in landscape is gonna boost some of the blues and the greens, but it's gonna tone down the reds. So it's a, that's mm -hmm. basically how, how it roughly works so i think I'm, I'm liking the landscape as the most pop okay now this is my style dennis is more like a, a, of a purist he sure. likes you know to to not make the pictures too vibrant because it was um to be as close as what 
how he remembers the scene. Sure, I personally, absolutely. that uh, personal opinion, I prefer when the image pop. You know, yeah. it's still real. I don't like you know when it's just like <laughs> what you saw with your eye, plus a little better. But yeah, yeah, and it, yeah. So, personal opinion. I'm sure Dennis w or somebody else may think ah, I don't like this, whatever. So everybody's gonna edit differently. But this is basically how I do it. So, so after the temperature, daylight, and second thing, the the picture style, landscape. We already have a difference with just those two. That is, this is how before, straight out of the camera, raw file, to after. This is already better mm -hmm. now here's a little trick to know how the exposure should be so reduce the contrast all the way down which you can see that the of course the the dynamic range of the histogram you can see that it's like much more narrow because you don't add the contrast you go negative now you take the highlights down which of course is going to make it even thinner then the shadows you're going to push it the other way so that makes it even thinner the whites all the way down and then you're going to push the blacks so now you really all the data in this picture is starting here and then it ends here so now what you can do is you can see where the picture should be where the the perfect if you will histogram and now what i like to do this would be there's no data no data no data bam here there's some data in the in the shadows and then no data no data and then here your your highlights are going to be there so you kind of play around and you can see that actually he did a pretty damn good job here because i'd say it was only off by half a stop if that which is very good so what we've done with the histogram now that we've moved the sliders to sort of compress that business together is we've tried to move all the data on our histogram to the center so including the tails yes. So that when there's a gap at the end of the darks and a gap at the end of the lights, we've left the same amount of space to the sides. So yes. all the information in the center. In the center. Which means that basically if you're like, well, and now I'm going to need my highlights back. If you push it, you know that you're going to have a lot of yeah, space there. And all, and all, yes. So now once the exposure, I'm going to try to not touch the exposure, which is a little less than half a stop. So now I can put everything back the way it was everything to zero mm -hmm. and here's a new picture and you can see that now it's perfectly balanced it's like starting right here yeah. all the data and then bams it goes away so that's it gets us in the perfect ballpark to me that step is very important now now you look now you start to look at the, the image and so the before and after now or, nicely done we didn't even bump vibrance we didn't change any saturation, nothing like that, but it already pops way more. Uh, now, granted, the landscape kind of played with the colors. Sure, that did made, a little bit for us. But it's definitely more poppy. Uh, one note, I will not crop any of the pictures. Uh, oh, okay. That's his comp composition. I'm just going to, you know, um, leave it as the way he has them. Uh, good. Even though one of them, I think the third one, I know he cropped it for his JPEG. Oh, okay. I'm gotcha. not even going to try to, 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 to crop it uh, if you want to see the result. Check his uh, Facebook page, Dennis Real Moser. You'll find all the travel pictures. There's a lot of them. Um, anyway, so here I'm start to then play down the the sliders, and after a while you get used to know what highlights where what part of the picture is gonna be. So what I generally do is kind of like move all the way, and you kind of get used to. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. I see this angle or what do you call that? Arch, that curve, whatever, curve mm -hmm. thank you, uh, is moving, and then the ground over there yeah. is getting darker. The sky is a little bit impacted, but not much. So you kind of know what this slider is going to impact. So I'm going to change it not much because I generally don't like to kill the highlights too much because it that's what creates a lot of a uh, pop. Shadows. Now there are shadows here, and then you have the regular light from the sun. Uh, I'd like to make a little bit more equal, so I'm going to push the shadows a little bit. And let me see what, mm. again, you can see what is going to change. So I'm going to push it a little bit, not much. So that gives me a little closer to the ball, on the, in the ballpark. Now for the white points and the black points, I personally don't do it from the creative point, from the creative side. I'm going more with 
show me the high, the, 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 the widest point, the brightest point of the image and the darkest point. And I'm just going to make them exactly clip and um, to make it fit within the histogram. Okay. Um, so what I generally do is to click the, uh, to hold the um, Alt or Option key. And as you hold the, the, the key on the keyboard, you kind of slide. And here there's nothing, nothing, nothing up. Oh. I'm starting to see some points over there, so I kind of, kind of zoom in a little bit, and then you kind of see why the How white. How far can you bring it down? Yeah, and because we start with really good exposure, you can see that it's really not a whole lot. But I like to see a little bit of points. Then you do the same thing. You hold the Option key, and you do the same thing for the blacks. So there's a black point over there, the window, which is mm -hmm. is expected. But let's see what else. Because the more you do, the more contrasty and the more poppy the picture will be. So about, yeah, that's really not bad at all. You can see that I didn't have to move this a whole lot. So to me, that's a very well exposed picture because he did a very good job straight out of the camera. Absolutely. Um, so there are good colors. There's the, the tones aren't crazy, anything like that. Now, I generally like to add a little bit of clarity when there are details like this. Because you have to remember, the picture, the image is going to be once printed or whatever format out, uh, at the um, at the end is going to be looking like this, and that looks pretty good. But let's see if I increase the clarity a little bit. I generally don't go very far because it starts to destroy the picture. Uh, yeah, fifteen seems to be about good. And what it does, clarity is micro contrast, so it kind of analyzes the other little edges. And increase contrast on both sides, but it doesn't in, a, in a, a way that I'm not sure exactly how it does it, okay. but it, it has a look. It's not the same as general contrast. <laughs> All right. And then vibrance, what it's going to do is kind of like saturation. It will increase all the colors that are fairly muted. So you generally increase, and then you can see it's going to start to get crazy. Like right. this is crazy yellows, the greens are wrong and all that. So you generally don't want to go insane so i would go it, it doesn't really need a whole lot because no. <laughs> you want it to be natural so let's say you want to go that way yeah that's pretty okay okay so these are the basic the, for the, the the basic panel this is I'm, I'm pretty happy with the outcome right here um now one thing i had noticed is that in this picture you can see a little bit of chromatic aberration it's not bad but yeah, here you have a little uh, purplish and some greenish and all that yeah right here so Lightroom is very good to just remove that now if you pay attention like let look at the look at the arm mm -hmm. this is a uh, there you go now I can see the, mm -hmm. the purple and then yeah. now it's more neutral. Also back there on this pillar in the back. Oh yeah? noticeable back there too, yeah. Yep, mm -hmm. takes care of it. So that's a good, it, it makes a difference when you have large prints, but even for small print, when you start to view on the web and all that, the edges are gonna be much sharper. So it's mm -hmm. gonna give the impression that, wow, it, it, it just looks like it's yeah, much sharper. That's all I can, yeah, I can say. So this is pretty neat. Um, any other suggestions? So here's the before and the after. To me, there's quite a difference. Yeah, I think that looks great. And I would increase a little bit of maybe a little bit more shadows. Yeah, something like that. Now, it's not a big difference, but I'm not going to play with the colors and all that because the grass looks good. Um, let's say, okay, here's an example. I'm not going to do it, but I'll show you quickly. Let's say you really want the sky to be like super blue mm -hmm. and this super, but then the, the grass is like, it starts to, to turn weird. Yeah. So let's say you're like, well, everything is great, but I don't like the grass anymore. What you can do is to play with the luminance and the saturation. So if you turn the green down, it's going to play with all the greens here. So this is how intense the color is basically going to be. So if you start, if you turn the green down, see that the, how uh -huh. how bright or dark the green is but it's still the same amount of colors now you can also desaturate a little bit there you go to make it a little bit more natural i'm not gonna do it because i increased the this guy a little too much 
And you can do the same thing with the blue. Let's say if you think that the blue is a little too bright, you go to luminance on the blue, you can make it a little bit more washed out mm -hmm. or much deeper, which of course this is completely hmm. unnatural. Yeah. So yeah, that's, I like to be as close as possible and to move the smallest amount for each slider to still remain pretty um, neutral, to not look very yeah. weird. I think that's a good way to help yourself not go super overboard. So that when you come back to it later, you're not like, Ma! <laughs> <laughs> what monster have I conjured here in this photo? Yeah, and, and I also like to really compare with the before. You get used to the before and you go to the after. You're like, okay, it's better, but it's not like, oh, now everything jumps out. Right, yeah. It's um, not completely false. Yeah. And so, of course, this is for, I'm just going to do the, show the basic um changes settings i don't i'm not going to show on this one like how you can graduate the sky Ooh, or that'd be a good brush one for a subsequent video though those are good tools yes and actually i might do this on the second or the third one did well, you just provide your own segue i think you did <laughs> and i maybe. don't mean the motorized <laughs> vehicle so i think this one is basically um about about good yeah i like it it's still natural, it still shows what's needed. I'm okay with that. Looks good. Hit us with the number two, my love. All right, number two. I really like this picture. I don't know why, mm -hmm. uh, just, I, I like it too. It's lovely. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna go very quickly with the same method that I did before to basically establish the right exposure. So I'm gonna be a little quicker this time. Contrast nice. down, highlight down, this up, this down, and this. This gives us a very flat picture, which is good. And here you can see that I can increase mm. this a little bit. This one was pretty right on too. It's very close. I would go about maybe here. So two third of a stop off, Nice. which is very good. And then put everything back together. And actually I forgot the temperature uh, and the uh, calibration, mm -hmm. but that's okay. We can still so there's a great chance that landscape is going to work pretty well. Yeah, it pushed nice. everything. But see how mu everything much got much brighter? Yeah. So now if I do it again, that is with the um, with the technique, if you will, maybe I it was not mm -hmm. two-thirds. Maybe it was not as sure. much. Um, so, yeah. Not it looks a little right shifted now, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. So basically be right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So basically the exposure to me is was a tenth, if that, probably yeah. even zero. So it was perfect. Sorry, Dennis. <laughs> um, and again, this one, I'm, I'm going to call it daylight. Okay, so let me put everything back to zero. Okay. Um, for the temperature here, there's snow. Uh, and you have two... The problem with this kind of edit is that you have two different lights. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have two different temperature. One is the day light temperature here so if you do daylight this part is going to be correct but this part is in shadow which technically you would have to use either cloudy or shade to make it right so what else is in shade this whole area so you have to select which how you want to pick the image to be do you want to concentrate on to be more accurate here or more here at this point i think it's just artistic decision sure, so you go through perfect. And it's not going to be right, even though technically the right would be the, the daylight. You kind of go and see which one you think looks nice. Now, the problem is that I wasn't there when he shot the picture. Yeah. So it could have looked completely different. And that is, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. But <laughs> I just have to go with simply the image uh, and not what you saw because I didn't see what you saw, obviously. Anyway, so I'm just going to go. Seesaw? I did seesaw. <laughs> sorry, you know I can't resist that one. <laughs> So I'm gonna go with the one I think I like better. I think daylight is a little bluish. I kind of like the yellow tones on this one. Cloudy is pretty neat. I think I'm I'm gonna go with this one, for example. Do you, which do you, do you have I'm a good preference? With that. I support you. Okay, and I already selected landscape, so this is good. We established that the exposure was good and all that. So, um, highlights. Generally highlights, again, is going to touch the sky. That's going to be your main thing for landscapes. And of course, you can see that you can get them back. Pretty much like very nice clouds. They're great clouds. Yes. Personal opinion, I like to see the clouds a lot. It, it creates a very nice... Um, it's more dramatic, in my opinion. 
But again, like I said earlier, if I kill the highlights, it makes the picture a little flat. Yeah, a little so flat. it's a, it's a balance between standard and you go down and you're trying to be to, to go as little low as you can or the not as low as how do you say yeah. it? <laughs> how low can you not go right basically yes it's, it's weird that you just <laughs> said right to that because that totally meant nothing <laughs> it does to me it's agreeable <laughs> so I, I would find a point where i'm okay but i don't want to kill the highlights because that's what really creates the pop and, and pop to me is very important for especially for our, uh, landscapes so I, I think around here and if I was to do this the clouds look good but then it's gonna steal away other things it's gonna make it too flat so something maybe like this and shadows obviously it's gonna boost all the shadows now do I want to see what's in the shadows I do you do so I then do. in that case Don't you increase you? yes <laughs> I do I thought you would yes now, the trick is this, is that even though it was shot at ISO 100, as you, if you increase the shadows, you're going to introduce noise. Sure. It's going to introduce noise in the shadows. So you have to be a little conservative as well. You, if you do this, that's fine, but just know that you're going to have to increase sure. uh, the noise reduction. You're going to have to work with the noise uh, because you introduced that. Now, how much... So go shadows back to, do you want so this is the zero yeah so and increase oh, oh a little like that. a little less i don't particularly love seeing every single detail of the somewhat scrubbish but foreground. that could be handled with a crop maybe so, true but we're not cropping so true okay so then I let's we assume that if we're yes. not cropping so i'm liking about here in okay. terms of making a little bit more of the detail visible but Balance. not all the detail i maybe don't want to see mm -hmm. yep um so we dealt with the highlights which is this sky, the shadows which is here in this particular instance all the the, the foreground and then again whites it's simply where are your white points and basically right here which is minus two that's perfect the less you move the sliders the better it will render later um blacks yeah, something like that because i'm expecting to see yeah, blacks so here bad. and there so that's that's okay again minus that's perfect very good numbers now clarity increase again as little as you want as you can and without in introducing some weird artifacts this is going to be weird like if i increase it to the max yeah. it's a little too crunchy actually it's not that bad on this particular image but it's definitely not natural so it's a balance of i would personally i would stop here now let's do a quick before and after this is before very nice after to me i, I nice think i'm back. more attracted to this but everybody's different um we did not increase the colors yet the colors seem to pop a little bit yeah, more definitely and just by playing with uh, with those sliders which is nice now you can increase the vibrance and then you can go as high as you want but it's going to be wow. weird right it's not going to be natural very natural so again it's a balance of just where it looks better but doesn't look weird and it's very hard to do before after at first glance to me that looks pretty good mm -hmm. yeah so again if you want the blue to be a little bit bluer a little trick you can drop the luminance on the blue so you can see that it it made this a little bit darker versus this 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 anyway um oh let me show you quickly how to sharpen for pictures let me go back to the previous one um basically you select the masking so you go to the detail panel you click on the masking and as you hold the option key and you have a mask which starts white which basically it means that it's going to apply everything here you increase this and until you select only the parts that you want to have it sharpen and basically the edges of the building a little bit of the grass and you increase there you go and now you can play with the sharpening knowing that it's not going to affect the parts that were black this allows to to increase the sharpening without 
introducing noise and weird artifacts in the sky in class because you don't want to sharpen the sky. There's no reason to do that. Right. So that's a very good um, way to do. And then noise, because of Swatchot ISO 100, and if you go really close, I don't see any noise. Mm -mm. But it looks great. Yeah, there's no real need. Anyway, so this one, there you go. Would you call this one done? Color balance, exposure, the histogram looks great. There's a lot of darks, a lot of mids, a little bit highs. I to me, it looks, so. it looks good. The uh, colors aren't... We're getting freezy. Um, Do we need to let, us, <laughs> let ourselves catch up with ourselves? Uh... We're back. Sorry about that. I was pretending I know how to do the robot. So. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, I think this picture looks good. This good picture is good, yeah. Any further improvement will have to be done by the originator. By the, the artist. Picture. Yes. How much? You, you can go pretty crazy. Anyway, so this one, we're going to go very quick. This is straight out of the camera. Again, by now, you should be familiar with what I would do. Daylight. Sure. Why not? This is amazing, by the way. Can I, I say that while you're doing what you're doing? Yeah, this I really like spectacular. this one. Landscape. Sure. It's a little too greenish for now, but let's get it in the ballpark. And then you can... Um, there you go. There you go. And then the exposure uh, is a little hot, but not much. Yeah, something like that. So basically a third of a stop. That's pretty good. Put everything back together. There you go. That's already before, after. Nice. There's already a big difference yeah. very, very quickly. And then you go with, you know, how much of the sky that you want to recover. I, want, I like personally. I'm digging that. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty nice contrast. Shadows. Well, it's going to do exactly that. It's going to boost the shadows. I kind of like the a little darkish. Maybe not much. A little hint of darkness, I think, preserves the depth. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Whites, again, very uh, white points. There's a white point over there in the yellows and eh, maybe something like that. And then same for the blacks, which is I'm holding the Alt Option key and some dark points about here. Yep, that looks pretty good to me. Then increase the clarity a little bit. I don't want to introduce weird things, halo yeah. or anything like that. I still want to Okay, here I see. Than that, that. That's right. Um, and the more you increase like this, the more halo yeah. you you would see. And this is way crunchy, and that's why clarity is uh, increase a little bit. Oops. That looks pretty nice. Maybe a little bit more. And then the vibrance. It's already pretty vibrant on this monitor. P.S. This monitor is calibrated, so if I mean, with the hardware we have and all that kind of stuff. So, um, if it looks weird, I don't know. I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's your problem. <laughs> yes. Um, I calibrated last week again, so it's it's a it's a fresh calibration. Um, something like this. This is pretty impactful. So before, very nice. Yeah. A little flat or a little muted, rather, not flat. Muted, that's a good way to say it. Now, yeah. this one, the blue, so basically there was, there was a lot of blues in the sky, and I can see them barely now, yeah. but now you and, can And I want to be honest, like, I could understand someone saying that what we've done to this one might be too much for them, which I would totally get. It's For me, it's a little border limit. Artistic I choice. I definitely wouldn't without... go any further, but mm -hmm. what a lovely picture. Yeah, that's very so nice. So glad you got this, Dennis. This looks great. And even though I increased the vibrance, which of course took care of the blue and the greens and things like that, but let's say I like everything, but the blues, I don't like them, that's fine. You can still leave the vibrance up for the general picture, but then you can target the blues yep. and either to make them even like crazy blue <laughs> or just make them disappear a little bit if you like the, 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 yeah. the look of that. If you feel like it makes it look a little more natural well. or something for you. And same for the greens. If you don't like the green, that's fine. You can play with saturation, but at least the general picture is basically where it should be. Uh, so to take care of the little chromatic aberration, which I can see here mm -hmm. a little bit, it's not that bad. And generally chromatic aberration happens because of the lens and when you have high contrast. 
a sky versus a mountain versus a building, something like that is going to show up depending on the quality of the lens and the angle that you are at. But, you know, Lightroom makes it very easy. You just click its button and it's it's actually gone here. I didn't even have to, you know, because you can select to be more manual. Uh, this results generally in a better and sharper image. Uh, and let me finish as well because this is the last picture for the example. Sharpening, hold the Alt option. I'm going to select only what I want to sharpen. So all the white lines very quickly. Increase the sharpening until it's not too weird and not too crunchy. This looks good. No noise re reduction. That's good. And that's pretty much, I will call this one done. Before, which is very nice, and this one. Let's say that it was a little too green. Either saturation in the greens. There you go. Yeah. And either you make darker greens or lighter greens. Nice. It's really a choice. I like that. Yeah. I like what you did. But this is a great picture. Yeah, I like this a lot. And again, not cropped and all that. And then mm -hmm. the... Hopefully it's going to be, a, it, this has helped somebody to understand uh, the sliders and how you can have where the sliders should be. Yeah, nice Any, job, babe. Thanks for taking us through that. Any questions? I'm good. <laughs> if I have any questions, though, I will write them in the comment box yes. below this video. I will also <laughs> be pleased to subscribe to your channel and also give this video a like. I might also consider sending you some photos of my own. Yeah. That I wish for you to um, experiment on or demonstrate some techniques on. Just maybe if I want to see sort of what your approach to them would be. Yeah, so there I'm, are so many different I approaches. might do all of those things. Just me. <laughs> Just I might. And and if you'd like to see a video where uh, other than the, just the basic sliders, which is very, very important. That's how you should start every images. Uh, that is, if you want to see how to use the radial tool or the graduate filter for the skies or um, uh, brushes for the particular like dodge and burn and all that, write a comment. Yeah, that way we can comments. go further, step two, or part two of that kind of video. But right now it's just the basic sliders, which is super important. Again, before, after, both great pictures, but that's how I would edit this picture if it was mine. <laughs> so thank chicken wang. So again, thank you very much Dennis and uh, for some for uh, um, sent me the, uh, the images and let me remove the blue things here. <laughs> That's not pretty. There you go. This train is going off the rails, honey. We better end this video soon. Yes. <laughs> Thanks everyone for being with us. Thank you.